All right, what's up everyone and welcome to our channel or welcome back if you've been here before. Today we're going to be talking about all the books that we read in December. So thank you so much for clicking on this video. As always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. We would love for you to come join our community. Now, why am I holding this puppy like this, you might ask. Well, one, there's a new addition to our family. But two, um, she is blocked off from the rest of the house right now. And so I wanted to show you the cuteness behind po the possible interruptions and all the sounds. Um, so yeah, bear with us during this video, please. All right, if you're new to our community, we do have a Discord, which is linked in the description box below. We also have a Patreon where we do monthly buddy reads and check-ins, and we're working on getting more content, like some exclusive videos. We're working on doing some exclusive reading sprints. There's just lots of things and awesome that are awesome. I was going to say, and also, there is a separate section in the Discord for our Patreon people. Um, so yeah, we would love to have you if that's something you would like to check out and support the channel in a different way. Like I said, in today's video, we're going to be going over the books that we read in December, which is our last wrap up of 2021. So we just want to thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for the support in 2021. And we're really looking forward to the new year and everything that's to come in 2022. So maybe we should do this one at a time or you want to I go? can hold your books. OK, if you would like the baby is in my lap and she's being good. She was being good. That's okay. If you just hand me all of them at once, then you won't have to move your hands. Well, I don't know how long she's going to stay in my lap. But... Well, we're going to see. Okay. The first book that I want to talk about that I read in December um, is These Violent Delights. I gave it five out of five stars. It's a very good book. It is a YA fantasy book, but it is written in a way that is way more adult-like and way more approachable, especially for people who like YA but are a little bit older, um, like myself. And not that there's anything wrong with reading YA, no matter how old you are, but I will say that it is written in a way that is closer to adult. Um, this is a pandemic book. It does have discussions of vaccines and things like that. So if that's not something that you're interested in reading right now, I would hold off on reading These Violent Delights. Um, but it is very, very good. It is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Um, it takes place in like 1900s or 1800s Shanghai. Um, and it is, it's just very good. And I would 10 out of 10 recommend it. And I can't wait to read the sequel, which I own, um, but I haven't had a chance to get to just yet. Also, last thing, the romance is very good. Um, it's very well done. It's interesting and it isn't very cheesy. It's just very good. Yeah. Very good. Yes. It was done in the 1900s. It starts at 1920s. There you go. 1926. Okay. All right. So first up for me, I read book two and three of The Wheel of Time, The Great Hunt, and The Dragon Reborn. I'm not going to say too much about these as I don't want to spoil um, spoil them for anyone. Uh, the Each of these books kind of end on a really high kind of climactic um, mountain top <laughs> so trying to explain either of them is going to kind of spoil the ending of the yeah. one before um they're both very good i gave them both five stars i think um the dragon reborn i liked a little bit more because there's a lot of character development and we're expanding the world of these characters so we're getting a lot more information of the background of like something like the Aes Sedai. um women begin to play uh well they're women do play a pivotal role in these books but we have a lot more time here with a lot of the different female characters, which I really enjoyed. Uh, this was fun. It was more of like an adventure um, kind of book as you can get from The Great Hunt, but we're also introduced to a lot of really cool characters that are um, here. And I'm currently on the fourth one. I've got about 400 pages that I'm going to slowly finish throughout the month as we do our readathon um, to make sure I get all the buddy reads I'm doing in and then also the um, other books that I've chosen. So. Okay, cool. Um, I was in a rush to finish my Goodreads goal, uh, so I also didn't read a lot in December. We had a lot going on at holidays, just a lot of planning and things like that. So I did not get that much as much as I wanted yeah, to read same. in December. But I did complete my Goodreads reading goal because I read a ton of graphic novels. There's nothing wrong with that. I support it. Um, but I read Heartstopper Volume 4, which you all, if you've been to this channel before, know how much I love this series. I always am amazed at how well done it is, how realistic it is, how non-cheesy it is, and how important it is. Um, if you don't know what Heartstopper is, I can't tell you much about Volume 4 for the same <laughs> reasons Casey can't tell you much about The Great Hunt. Um, but... Basically, it is the story of falling in love. It's a male-male romance. Um, it's about navigating gender and sexuality. Um, and there's just such a great cast of characters. The art style is very good. And I can't wait for the TV show. Um, but just like the rest of the volumes in the series, I gave it five stars. 
and I loved every minute of it. Did I would definitely recommend it. TV show? Yes, on Netflix. Of course. They've already casted it, they've already filmed, like it's for sure happening, so. Nice. Yeah, very excited about that. All right, so. <laughs> Okay, so next up for me, <clears throat> I read the second book in the Dune series, uh, Dune Messiah. I think I rated this four stars. I really liked it. Um, I did I did it in like one reading sprint. I think we did like a seven hour reading sprint. And I pretty much read the whole thing beyond like maybe 50 pages of the, the beginning that I had read the night before. Um, I really like the idea of how um, kind of sycophants are formed and dictatorships and this idea I use a noise reducer, so that gets really reduced. Okay. So it's not perfect, but it's reduced. Okay. Um, and it's kind of dealing with tyranny and how these things form. I've heard a lot of people talk about how these books have um, sort of a hero complex. Um, I think if you were to read the second one, you would understand that I think more or less what Frank Herbert is saying that is imperialism is bad. Um, we are not supposed to like a lot of the uh, decisions that these main characters are making. Um, and honestly, the introduction that was written by Frank Herbert's son in this book is really interesting because he explains why Herbert wrote the series. Um, and I thought that that was really interesting. He says essentially that uh, Dad had worked and seen the megalomania of leadership and the pitfalls of the magnetic, charming politicians planting another interesting seed in Dune. Um, very few readers realize that the, sto the story of Paul was not only a Greek tragedy, but that he's also talking about how it leads to a ruination of heroes because they become these godlike figures in people's uh, lives. And the, that kind of godlike attributes to them corrupt them. Um, abs absolute power corrupts, absolutely. I encourage people to read this. Please read the introduction before because I think it really does actually kind of eludicate what Dune was written about. Um, maybe in a way that I'm seeing some uh, reviewers uh, not really understanding. I'm not saying that their opinions are bad. I'm just saying that I think that uh, a lot of what he was doing is misinterpreted and this kind of introduction does a really good job of explaining why the series was written and why I really like it because I, I enjoy topics of politics and so on. <laughs> Update on the burrito baby. She is fast asleep in my lap. Yeah, she wants so. because she gets cra she gets cranky and then she cries because she's yeah because she's she won't a baby. go to sleep. She is. She's only seven she's weeks old, so she is a wee little she's, baby. Yeah, she's a little. I don't. Yeah, I, she's a little young for them to have been adopting them out. I think. But all right. So next up for me was the last graphic novel that I read in December, and this was a reread for me, and that's username Eve. Yeah. Evie, yeah. Um, and I actually gave this two stars the second time around. Yeah, you didn't like it. Yeah, it was not what I remembered. And actually thinking back, I think I didn't finish this. I think I started it and I loved the beginning of it. And it started going in a direction I didn't like. Um, but I loved the beginning so much that I meant to finish it. But my life got so crazy that I never came back to it. So I did put this in my recommendation video for graphic novels. And that was based off what I remembered of it, which was the beginning, which is really good. But then it takes an odd turn that I didn't remember and I did not enjoy this time around. So take it for what you will. I kind of feel bad that it's in my recommendation video, but there might be somebody out there who does enjoy the turn that it takes. Um, so yeah, at the heart of it, it's a good story. Um, the like premise of it is heartwarming and good, but I just did not enjoy the direction that it took. So I gave it two stars. Yeah. Cool. I remember you saying, I don't, I didn't know it was this one, but I remember you reading one and saying, I don't like this. Yeah. All right, next up for me is Circe by, what's the name? Madeline, Madeline. Miller. Yeah. I rated this book five stars. It was fantastic. You, um, I, I will go ahead and answer this right off the bat. A lot of people in our Discord server said, hey, if I don't really know a lot about Greek mythology, can I read this? Absolutely. I don't really know that much about Greek mythology beyond just the, some of the history, like kind of brief history stuff I'm interested in, and then also being a literature major because a lot of people like to talk about Prometheus and, and, mm -hmm. and such and like their poetry and then I, we have to learn we have to learn about it. But I really don't know that much about it. And um, she does an excellent job of explaining. Um, I mean, this is all through the purview and the, um, the, uh, the point of view of Circe. 
So we see her formation, we hear her explain how Zeus came to power, we hear her explain kind of how man and God and the gods kind of coexisted again, uh, you know, with each other and her view of how the gods interact with humans. You don't need to know anything about Greek mythology. She, it's really cool because you're getting it from her perspective of everything happening um, because we, we get a long kind of life, the life of Circe. Um, it's a beautiful story. It's beautifully written. I absolutely loved it. Um, it felt very kind of refreshing to me because it's not something I normally read. So I gave it, I, if I, I probably said this already, but I gave it five stars. And I encourage everyone to read it. It's very good. It opened your eyes to a new genre. Yeah, yeah, no. And I mean, like, Greek mythology is fascinating, of course, because it was very, it's really intricate. Um, and it's also, like, really messed up. <laughs> like, there is some really messed up stuff that, uh, that the Greeks believed that the gods did. Like, the formation of the Minotaur. Don't look that up if you are easily grossed out. Yeah, no thanks. All right, so the last book that we are going to discuss is our Patreon buddy read. Um, it's the last book you are going to discuss. I said, well, I meant we as in we're going to discuss it together. Oh, yeah. Um, I know you have a lot left. No, I have one. Oh. Oh, those Christmas. are... Christmas. Yeah, okay. Those and, are just Christmas and books. And the Wheel of Time books. Okay. Um, okay. But I see books stacked there. I thought they were books that you had Oh, left. these ones? No, yeah. I haven't read those ones yet. Okay, so this was our Patreon pick for December is Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. Um, I'll go first, although our opinions mirror each other. I gave it five stars. Um, it is not a genre that I typically enjoy, which it's, I think the broadest would be literary fiction. Um, although it weaves in elements of kind of like thriller at some points. And I meant like, like kind of, there's kind of suspenseful moments in it. It, it like has, well, I mean, it's got like sci-fi elements and I was it has there. historical yeah. fiction moments. Yeah, I was getting to those too. I don't see the thriller. Okay, well, it definitely has historical fiction and sci-fi. Like those for sure are woven in together, but it is a multiple POV book. So is that if that's not something you like, don't pick this book up because not only is it multiple POV, but it's multiple timelines, multiple generations. And that just adds a very special twist to this book. There are so many good things that I could say about it. I understand why Anthony Doerr won the Pulitzer for All the Light We Cannot See. Um, it is just brilliant. So I'm here to say, even if this is not a genre that you typically enjoy, I would recommend it to you. At least give it a try. Um, because I was very shocked that I loved it as much as I did. It is a big book, so make sure you give yourself enough time to get through it. It took up a lot of my December. So yeah, you have five stars. Yeah, I, um, I, I gave this book a million stars. It besides beyond horror it is probably in my favorite genre it's very postmodern um as he was saying with uh, a lot of, a lot of the structure timelines uh, multiple points of view um in and out of everything going on um it's fantastic if you're fans of david mitchell um hillary Man uh, books that are in Hil that hillary mantel have written that are not historical fiction jeanette winterson if you like those authors, you will love this book. It's one of probably going to be my top 10 favorite books of all time, um, along with Slight House by David Mitchell, uh, because it's fantastic. Um, I think I read this in two days. Mm, we read really fast, yeah. Um, and I loved every second of it. Um, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And um, I'm excited to discuss it with our patrons. Um, here, I guess in a few days, um, as the recording of the recording of this video, um, because I'm I'm interested to hear their thoughts. I for the most part, I think most people really really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's great. It's fantastic. Yeah, I was gonna say to our, our patrons that are watching, I'm working on the discussion questions. I should get those out to you all today on Patreon and in our Discord section. And like Casey was saying, don't forget if you are one of our patrons, the discussion is happening on Friday, um, this coming Friday. So we'll see you there. And finally, for me, I uh, have here, My Heart is a Chainsaw. I finished off the year great with Circe and Cloud Cuckoo Land and then the Wheel of Time books. And then it ended with the bang with My Heart is a Chainsaw. I freaking yeah. censored myself. <laughs> I freaking love this book. Um, it's also going to probably go in my top 10. It is right up there. It's very similar stylistically to some of the writers I just mentioned. However, it is horror. Um, it's in the similar vein of Stephen King, too, except it has a little bit more stream of consciousness. You are walking through the point of view of the um, lady character. I believe her name is Jade, or she wants to be called Jade, yes. Um, I think her name is Jennifer, but she goes by Jade. And you're seeing this almost entirely through her perspective. She is a slasher um, 
a slasher movie fan. So she's seeing some things kind of happening around her that look like maybe she's going to be in a real life slasher, uh, not, you know, a essentially a real life slasher situation. And she's trying to help this other girl that she sees being the final girl uh, have all the tools so she can survive. And then, of course, there's a twist ending um, mm. that is uh, slightly more supernatural. Um it's if you've read the um, only good Indians, uh, you'll have a good feel for what this book is going to be like. Though it is only through one uh, perspective. I love this book. It's another million stars. It's fantastic. I'm a huge horror fan, and I mean, this is just a love story to uh, slasher movies in general. And he does a great job developing Jade as a character um, and her thought process. So, if you if you like horror and you like strong character uh, character kind of growth and strong character relations and um, dialogue, go for this. It's it's excellent. If you're not a Stephen Graham Jones fan, though, don't read it. You yeah. won't like it. Um, it is very much right up that alley. And I know that he's kind of an, an author people either love or, or hate. And I, I like Riley Sager. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I absolutely adore him. So, all right. Well, those are all the books that we read in the month of December, uh, January as our readathon month. And I'm already considering and thinking about readathons for the future. I'm actually thinking about doing like a flash readathon in February for romances. Um, but that is a work in progress. It would be like a weekend thing, not like a, a month thing, no points, no teams, anything. Um, just stuff for fun kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the burrito is awake. So I'll let her tell you guys to subscribe to our channel. And so to... you can see more. Well, not burrito. just her, but we have other pets that often visit us. Oh, you sweet girl. You're um, Are you sleeping? But yeah, so thank you guys for watching as always. And we will see you in our next video. And we'll catch you on Discord and in the comments below. Bye. Bye. You over it? You did sleep for a hot minute in Baby's nah. lap, though.